Okay. Hello. Good evening. I hope you guys are all doing very well. Let's see what I've got for you today. This is one that I've been wanting to do for a while, but just haven't found the time. And now is the time. So today I'm going to be doing from the Poetic Edda, Lokasena. Um, this one is by Anonymous, and the original publishing date is unknown, but it was translated by Henry Adams Bellows in 1936. All right, let's get started. If you remember, please uh, toss me a like, subscribe if you haven't, and if you're enjoying it, of course. If you hate it, don't. It's okay. All right, here we go. It's a little introductory note to begin with before we start with the actual Lokasena. The Lokasena is found only in Regis, where it follows the hymns Skvitha. Snorri quotes four lines of it grouped together as a single stanza. The poem is one of the most vigorous of the entire collection and seems to have been preserved in exceptionally good condition. The exchange or contest of insults was dear to the Norse heart, and the Locusina consists chiefly of Loki's taunt to the assembled gods and goddesses and their largely ineffectual attempts to talk back to him. The author was evidently well-versed in mythological lore, and the poem is full of references to incidences not elsewhere recorded. As to its date and origin, there is the usual dispute, but the latter part of the 10th century in Iceland seems to be the best guess. The prose notes are long and of unusual interest. The introductory one links the poem closely to the Himiskibitha, much as the Regensmal, Fafsnismal, and Sigrifmal are linked together. The others fill in the narrative gaps in the dialogue, very like stage directions, and provide a conclusion by relating Loki's punishment, which presumably is here connected with the wrong incident. It is likely that often when the poem was recited during the two centuries or so before it was committed to writing, the speaker inserted some such explanatory comments and the compiler of the collection followed this example by adding such explanations as he thought necessary. The Lokasena is certainly much older than the Hymnskvitha. The connection between them being purely of sub of purely one of subject matter, and the 12th century compiler evidently knew a good deal less about mythology than the author whose work he was annotating. Egir, who was also called Gimir, had prepared ale for the gods after he had the mighty kettle, as now has been told. To this feast came Othin and Frigg, his wife, Thor came not, as he was on a journey in the east. Sif, Thor's wife, was there, and Brag Anitun, his wife, Tyr, who had but one hand, was there. The wolf Finrir had bitten off his other hand when they had bound him. There were Njorth and Skothi, his wife, Freyr and Freya, and Vitar, son of Odin. Loki was there, and Freyr's servant, Bigvir, and Bela. Many were there of the gods and elves. Egir had two serving men, Vimafing and Ildor. 
glittering gold they had in place of firelight. The ale came on of itself, and great was the peace. The guest praised much the ability of Egir's serving men. Loki might not endure that, and he slew Fimafang. Then the gods shook their shields and howled at Loki and drove him away to the forest, and thereafter set to drinking again. Loki turned back, and outside he met Eldir. Loki spoke to him. Speak now, Eldir, for not one step farther shall thou fare. What ale talk here do they have within the sons of the glorious gods? Eldir spake. Of their weapons they talk, and their might in war. The sons of the glorious gods from the gods and elves who are gathered here, no friend in words shalt thou find. Loki spake. In shall I go into Egir's hall, for the feast I fain would see. Bale and hatred I bring to the gods, and their mead with venom I mix. Eldir spake. If in thou goest to Egir's hall, and fain and feast would see, and with slander and spite would sprinkle the gods, think well lest they wipe it on thee. Loki spake. Bethink thee, Ildir, if thou and I shall strive with spiteful speech, richer I grow in ready words, if thou speakest too much to me. Then Loki went into the hall, but when they who were there saw who had entered, they were all silent. Loki spake, Thirsty I come into this thine hall. I lopped from a journey long to ask of the gods that one should give fair mead for a drink to me. Why sit ye silent, swollen with pride, ye gods, and no answer give? At your feast a place and a seat prepare me, or bid me forth to fare. Bragi spake, a place and a seat will be, will the gods prepare, no more in their midst for thee, for the gods know well what men they wish to find at their mighty feasts. Loki spake, remember, Othan, in olden days, that we both our blood have mixed, then didst thou promise no ale to pour unless it were brought for us both. Othin spake, Stand forth then, Vithar, and let the wolf's father find a seat at our feast, lest evil should lo Loki speak aloud here in Egir's hall. Then Vithar arose and poured drink for Loki, but before he drank, he spoke to the gods. Hail to you gods, ye goddesses, hail. Hail to the holy throng. Save for the god who yonder sits, Bragi there on the bench. Bragi spake, a horse and a sword from my hoard will I give, and a ring gives Bragi to boot, that hatred thou makest not among the gods, so rouse not the great ones to wrath. Loki spake, In horses and rings thou shalt never be rich, Bragi, but both shalt thou lack. Of the gods and elves here together met, least brave in battle art thou, and shyest thou art of the shot. Bragi spake, Now were I without, as I am within, and here in Aegir's hall, Thine head would I bear in mine hands away, and pay thee the price of thy lives. Loki spake, In thy seat art thou bold, not so are thy deeds, Bragi, adorner of benches. Go out and fight if angered, thou feelest, no such hero forethought has. Ithun spake, well, prithee, Bragi, his kinship way, since chosen as wish son he was. And speak not to Loki such words of spite here in Aegir's hall. Loki spake, 
Be silent, Itun, thou art, I say, of women most lustful in love. Since thou thy waist's washed bright arms didst win about my brother's slayer. Itun spake. To Loki I speak not with spite spiteful words. Here within Egir's hall, and Bragi I calm, who is hot with beer, for I wish not that fierce they should fight. Gefhun spake. Why ye gods twain with bitter tongues raise hate among us here? Loki is famed for his mockery foul, and the dwellers in heaven he hates. Loki spake. Be silent, Gifhun, for now shall I say who led thee to evil life. The boy so fair gave a necklace bright, and about him thy leg was laid. Othin spake, Mad art thou, Loki, and little of wit, the wrath of Gifhun to rouse, for the fate that is set for all she sees even as I, methinks. Loki spake, Be silent, Othin. Not justly thou settest the fate of the fight among men. Oft gavest thou to him, who deserved not the gift, to the baser the battle's prize. Othin spake, Though I gave to him who deserved not the gift, to the baser the battle's prize, winter's eight, Wast thou under the earth milking the cows as a maid? Ay, and babes didst thou bear, unmanly thy soul must seem. Loki spake. They say that with spells. In Samezi, once, like witches with charms, didst thou work, and in witches' guise, among men didst thou go. Unmanly thy soul must seem. Frigg spake. Of the deeds ye two of old have done, ye should make no speech among men. What there ye de ye have done, in days gone by, old tales should ne'er be told. Loki spake. Be silent, Frigg, thou art Fjorn's wife, but ever lustful in love, for Vili and Ve, thou wife of Vithirir, both in thy bosom have lain. Frick spake, If a son like Balder were by me now, here within Aegir's hall, from the sons of the gods thou shouldest go not forth, till thy fierceness in fight were tried. Loki spake, Thou wilt then, Frigg, that further I tell of the ill that now I know, Mine is the blame that Balder no more thou seest ride home to the hall. Freya spake, Mad art thou, Loki, that known thou makest, the wrong and shame thou hast wrought. The fate of all does Frigg know well, though herself she says it not. Loki spake, Be silent, Freya. For fully I know thee, sinless thou art, not thyself. Of the gods and elves who are gathered here, each one as thy lover has lain. Freya spake, false is thy tongue, and soon shalt thou find that it sings thee an evil song. The gods are wroth, and the goddesses all, and in grief shalt thou homeward go. Loki spake, Be silent, Freya, thou foulest witch, and steeped full sore in sin. In the arms of thy brother, the bright gods caught thee, when Freya her wind set free. Njurth spake, Small ill does it work, though a woman may have, a lord or a lover or both, but a wonder it is that this womanish god comes hither, though babes he has borne. Loki spake, Be silent, Njurth, thou wast eastward sent to the gods as a hostage given, and the daughters of Hymir their privy had, when use did they make of thy mouth. Njurth spake, 
Great was my gain, though long was I gone, to the gods as a hostage given. The son did I have, whom no man hates, and foremost of gods is found. Loki spake, Give heed now, Njorth, nor boast too high, no longer I hold it hid. With thy sister hadst thou so fair a son, thus hadst thou no worse a hope. Tear spake, of the heroes brave is Fenrir the best. Here in the home of the gods, he harms not maids nor the wives of men, and the bound from their fetters he frees. Loki spake, be silent, Tear, for between two men friendship thou ne'er couldst fashion. Fain would I tell how Fenrir once thy right hand rent from thee. Tear spake, my hand do I lack. But Hrothrinir, thou, and the loss brings longing to both. I'll fares the wolf, who shall ever wait in fetters the fall of the gods. Loki spake, be silent, tear, for a son with me thy wife once chanced to win. Not a penny, methinks, wast thou paid for the wrong, nor wast righted an inch, poor wretch. Freyr spake, by the mouth of the river the wolf remains till the gods to destruction go. Thou too shalt soon, if thy tongue is not stilled, be fettered, thou forager of ill. Loki spake, the daughter of Gymir, with gold didst thou buy, and sold thy sword to boot. But when Muspel's son through Mirkwood's ride, thou shalt weaponless wait, poor wretch. Migvir spake, had I birth so famous as Ingnar Freyr, and sat in so lofty a seat, I would crush to-morrow this croaker of ill and beat all his body to bits. Loki spake, what little creature goes crawling there, snuffling and snapping, snapping about? At Freyr's ear ever wilt thou be found, or muttering hard at the mill? Bigvir spake, Bigvir my name, and nimble am I, as gods and men do grant. And here I am proud that the children of Hrupt together all drink ale. Loki spake, Be silent, Bigvir, thou never could set their ha snares of the meat for men. Hid in straw on the floor they found thee not when heroes were fain to fight. Heimdall spake, Drunk art thou, Loki, and mad are thy deeds. Why, Loki, leavest thou this not? For drink beyond measure will lead all men, no thought of their tongues to take. Loki spake, Be silent, Heimdall. In days long since was an evil fate for thee fixed. With a back held stiff must thou ever stand as warder of heaven to watch. Skathi spake, Light art thou, Loki, but longer thou mayest not in freedom flourish thy tale. On the rocks the gods bind thee with bowels torn forth from thy frost-cold sun. Loki spake, Though on rocks the gods bind me with bowels torn forth, from my frost-cold sun I was first and last at the deadly fight, and there where Thiazi we caught. Skathi spake, Wert thou first and last at the deadly fight, that there where Thiazi was caught, from my dwellings and fields shall ever come forth a counsel cold for thee. Loki spake, More lightly thou spakest with Lefei's son, when thou badest me come to thy bed. Such things must be known, if now we too shall seek our sins to tell. Then Sif came forward and poured mead for Loki in a crystal cup, and said, Hail to thee, Loki, and take thou here the crystal cup of old mead. For me at least, alone of the gods, blameless thou knowest to be. He took the horn and drank therefrom, 
alone thou wert, if truly thou wouldest all men so shyly shun. But one do I know, full well methinks, who had thee from Hilrithi's arms, Loki the crafty and lies. Bela spake, the mountains shake, and surely I think from his home comes Holrathi. Now, he will silence the man who is slandering here together both gods and men. Loki spake, Be silent, Bela, thou art Begvir's wife, and deep art thou steeped in sin, a greater shame to the gods, came near, befouled thou art with thy filth. Then came Thor forth and spake, Unmanly one cease, or the mighty hammer Molnir shall close thy mouth. Thy shoulder cliff shall I cleave from thy neck, and so shall thy life be lost. Loki spake, Lo, in has come the son of earth. Why threaten so loudly, Thor? Less fierce thou shalt go to fight with the wolf when he swallows Sigfather up. Thor spake, Unmanly one cease, or the mighty Thor hammer shall close your mouth. Close thy mouth, I hurl thee up and out in the east, where men shall see no more. Loki spake, that thou hast feared. On the east road forth, to men shouldst thou say no more. In the thumb of a glove didst thou hide, thou great one, and there forgot thou wast Thor. Thor spake, unmanly one, cease, or the mighty hammer Molnir shall close thy mouth. My right hand shall smite thee with Hrungrir's slayer till all thy bones are broken. Loki spake, a long time still do I think to live, though thou threatenest thus with thy hammer. Rough seemed the straps of Skrimir's wallet. When they meet thou mightiest not get and faint from the hunger didst feel. Thor spake, Unmanly one cease, or the mighty hammer Molnir shall close your mouth. The slayer of Hrungnir shall send thee to hell and down to the gate of death. Loki spake, I have said to the gods and the sons of the god the things that wedded my thoughts, but before thee alone do I now go forth. For thou fightest well, I ween. Ale hast thou brewed, but Egir now, such feasts shalt thou make no more. Or all the th that thou hast, which is here within, shall play the flickering flames, and thy back shall be burnt with fire. And after that, Loki hid himself in Franang's waterfall, in the guise of a salmon. And there the gods took him. He was bound with the bowels of his son Vali, but his son Narfi was changed to a wolf. Skathi took a poison snake and fastened it up over Loki's face, and the poison dropped thereon. Sigyn, Loki's wife, sat there and held a shell under the poison, but when the shell was full, she bore away the poison. And meanwhile, the poison dropped on Loki. Then he struggled so hard that the whole earth shook therewith. And now that is called an earthquake. Please like, share, subscribe, comment, and have a good night.